We're going to move back to former finance minister Tito um, We're going to be looking at his international influence at large. We do know that the former finance minister, in fact, spent time in Lesotho whilst he was in exile. We made many friends with many Basutus during his stay. Now, in recent times, he was doing work for the AU. And so for a little bit more about his international legacy, we're going to be joined in studio this morning by SABC News International Editor, Sophie Mogwena. Sophie, good morning. Uh, we obviously have been looking at his uh, legacy at large, both in South Africa, the continent, and then, of course, globally. We know that uh, in 1980, he was exiled to Lesotho, went to Roma, um, continued his studies there. In 1982, the apartheid regime, of course, uh, invaded Lesotho, killed 42 um, you know, South African exiles in Maseru. Uh, obviously, you know, Tito then ended up being the flag bearer. Talk to us about his impact um, in, in Lesotho, the impact Lesotho would have had on him as well in those early years. Yes, he had a strong relationship with the Mountain Kingdom, including the royal family. Mutlodlehi uh, King Litsia III in person, and he was doing some work behind the scenes, helping the king in terms of uh, some of the projects aimed at helping Basutu in the countryside. Uh, but he had uh, friends, as you pointed out, the current Minister of uh, Energy, Professor Ngosa Mahau, he, a very close friend. It was also Professor Suhai Santo, and Professor Suhai Santo will be joining the monas in Limpopo. He's there already, and he was working on some uh, projects with Professor Suhai Santo on the continent, but also particularly in the Sadek region, and they were hoping to make major announcements around that. And I think uh, maybe the professor later on will be able to divulge what they were up to, including the memoir. Now, the important issue we pointed out when he was in exile in Lesotho during that Maseru raid, uh, he was one of the people who played a very important role in terms of uh, coordinating those who were in exile in Lesotho, sharing information, and they were the first to get the news. And that is why when we spoke to Professor Musa Mahau, he spoke passionately about the role he played at that time. Let's take a listen at what uh, Professor uh, Musa Mahau had to say during the Maseru raid and Ditombowini. 1982 uh, Maseru Massacre. Incidentally, that the preceding evening, we had a memorial service of uh, uh, a gentleman, uh, Majara, who incidentally is the elder brother of the current. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister, who had uh, been killed by a bomb, uh, uh, presumably by the LLA. And uh, there was a commemoration service on campus where we had uh, a range of speakers. And um, during his uh, speech, Mwakwaka Masudi, Prophetically says, uh, comrades, we must be alert. Uh, the apartheid regime has been attacking our comrades uh, in Mozambique. And uh, at any time, they could attack in Lesotho. That was around midnight when those prophetic uh, words were made. And by about five o'clock, Tosami Lebota knocks at my door. Come right, Mahal, come right, Mahal. The boys have attacked Masir. And um, um, a comrade of mine at Jule Rock, uh, late uh, uh, husband of uh, Lindy West Sulu, he used to, to squat in our rooms. <laughs> So he was squatting in my room that night, and he says, "Now, nah, and uh, I think that attack is happening in Maputo, but it's not happening here." A few minutes again, Tosamile came knock, knocking a little more uh, ferociously, and uh, uh, and uh, he uh, reiterates that uh, yes, he's listened to the BBC. Uh, the regime has attacked Masir, so we immediately dressed up, uh, drove uh, a beetle. Uh, were some of the earliest people to arrive at the various areas that had been attacked 
uh, Comrade Chris Honey had his house uh, at um, uh, the Tutein, which was called Moscow. So he went there. Um, uh, there had been atrocities there, and then there was another place apart from my called Cuba. Um, again, atrocious things had happened. Um, next to uh, the Lesotho College of uh, Education, the um, uh, other comrades together, women and children and uh, everybody butchered. Uh, terrible. So we went. We went around Maseru. Um, <clears throat> Um, inspecting areas that had been attacked. It was a, a terrible thing. As you know, uh, the, the final count was that 42 people had been killed. Uh, 30 of them were South Africans. Some of them were just visitors. We had come to visit uh, their relatives here. Uh, 12 of those who were killed were uh, uh, Lesotho nationals and uh, so that that was a, um, a terrible thing that happened, and uh, uh, we as activists had to pick the the pieces and uh, give support uh, to distraught families, and uh, um, and, and so yes, that is what it was. Tito, well, Tito was in the midst of it uh, uh, all, yes. No, just um, following those sentiments echoed by Prof. Um, Sophie, it's clear that, um, you know, the former finance minister had a unique way to connect and rally with people. And so much so that his work extended both in the private and public sector, but, but also internationally and on the continent. I know there were lots of comparisons as well um, of South Africa to Rwanda. And so perhaps you could speak to, you know, the work that he had been doing on the continent with the AU, but also his vision for South Africa to follow up, implement at large, and uh, obviously also just um, look at some of the, you know, fusion of technological innovation that comes with taking us and propelling us forward as a, as a people. Well, as you know that when he was the governor of the Reserve Bank, he interacted a lot with other central bank uh, governors around the world. So he again strengthened his international perspective, outlook and relationship. Because, you know, when he left Lesotho, he went to London. So he had mm. friends there. From London, he went to uh, Zambia, where he worked with people like former President Thabo Mbeki and uh, Max Sisulu drafting the ANC economic policy as part of Ready to Govern. So when he was finance minister, he really created uh, a lot of uh, relationships and also the contacts with many people. And then he decided on retirement after being finance minister to focus on the continent. And he was the chairperson of an institute that is based in Ghana that deals with issues of uh, uh, properties, that deals with issues of economic development on the continent. On the AU side, you'd recall that when President Kagame was the chair of the AU at the heads of state and government level at the assembly, he was requested to come up with recommendations in terms of the transformation of the AU. And therefore, he had to put up a team of people that he can work with. M Mr. Tito Mboweni, the former Reserve Bank governor, was part of that team. He chose the Domboweni because of his understanding of the economy and also his hard work, his experience, his global uh, outreach. And therefore, he was joined by people like the UN, the current UN Deputy Secretary General, Dr. Amina Mohamed. And therefore, they worked with others to formulate those reforms. But recently, also, he was the chair of the AU uh, Peace Fund. Uh, he passed on doing that work. In fact, when the former South African president had a meeting or a conference in, uh, uh, in Mahalisbeck recently where they were talking about peace and security on the continent, uh, I was expecting him to be there because you won't have this peace unless you fund the projects or the operations like your peace missions that are aimed at ensuring that the continent is not engulfed in these uh, serious wars that we see, you know, in Sudan, in the DRC, you look at Cabo Delgado in Mozambique, and he didn't. But at that time, I knew that a week 
he had indicated to me that uh, he's going to Ghana to attend this meeting of that institute. So I think uh, on coming back, maybe he wasn't well, but we don't know. When I spoke to President Mbeki, he said he was also shocked because he wasn't even aware that he was in hospital. So he, it, it was a surprise to him. And therefore, uh, the continent has lost. And that is why the president of uh, Rwanda, Paul Kagame, did issue a statement on Sunday talking about this man, Dito, including the UNDSG. He was an internationalist.